Welcome to the Stockade 315 cordless staple cleaning video. There's four steps in the process. We're going to dismantle the tool, degrease the tool, lubricate the tool, and then we're going to assemble the tool back together. Before we start, we need to make sure that the tool is safe by removing the battery, the gas cylinder itself, and any staples that are on the magazine. Once that's completed, we need to make sure that we have all the tools required to clean the tool. The tools are as follows. A four millimeter hex head Allen wrench supplied with the tool itself. You're gonna need a plastic drip tray, a number two Phillips head screwdriver, an old toothbrush for scrubbing, Paslo degreasing oil, Paslo degreaser, safety glasses, safety gloves, lint-free cloth. Step one, we're going to dismantle the tool. First thing we need to do is grab our four millimeter hex head Allen wrench or the battery driven Allen wrench and rewind all the four screws. Once all the screws have backed out, you want to remove the cap, leaving the screws in the holes to avoid losing them. Set that off to the side. Next, remove the black magazine nut at the bottom midway down the magazine. You need to be careful that the black washer doesn't get away from you. That's going to be needed. Next, in the front of the gun, you want to remove the work contact element, the red lever, and slightly depress the contact element. Place the nose piece to the side. Grab your number two Phillips head screwdriver. On the handle itself, you're going to remove the screw. Once you grab that out, set that off to the side. Then use the head of the screwdriver and push the pin out. Set them both over there. Once that's complete, you're gonna slide the front of the handle away from the magazine and gently lift the handle and fan assembly off. Inside the handle itself is a black piece of plastic called the fuel shelf. Remove this from inside the handle and place carefully off to the side with the handle assembly. Step two we're ready to degrease the tool. You need to, de to depress the piston before applying any degreaser. The way you're gonna do that is use the back end of your Phillips screwdriver. Put the lint-free rag inside the bore and use the screwdriver to push it to the bottom. Then use the Paslo degreaser to spray around the outside of the chamber. Apply liberally. Then we use again the bottom end of the screwdriver to pull the rag up and down cleaning around the outside of the chamber. Once the chamber is visibly clean, remove the rag. Wipe around the top of the cylinder itself, giving it a good clean as well. Take a look inside the cylinder. Ensure it looks nice and clean. There's no carbon spots or deposits. You did a good job, set that off to the side. Pick up the handle and fan assembly. In this section, we're going to be cleaning the steel O-rings. The spark plug area. And the fan itself. You can't use an air compressor in this area because it's going to damage the fan and the motor. Using the Paslo degreaser, spray around the O-rings the fan and the spark plug area. Wipe the area with the rag, ensuring you remove any black marks or stubborn carbon stains or any buildup that might be on the uh, motor assembly itself. Once it visually is clean to your satisfaction, place the assembly side and let it dry. Next step is we're gonna clean the air filter. Pick up the black rear cover that we removed earlier in the video. Use your thumbs, press down on the cap, and under the cap is the air filter itself. Remove the air filter and spray liberally with the greaser. It's good here to use your fingers to work in the uh, degreaser itself to get any stuff you might not be able to see. Put the filter back into position on the rear cover and place it aside to dry. With any extra 
degreaser you have on the rag. Wipe the filter cap clean, replace the cap on the cover, and secure. Step three, we're ready to lubricate the tool. You want to pick up the cylinder assembly in preparation for lubricating. First step is you want to drop the impulse oil around the inside of the cylinder, trying to get a full circle of oil all the way around. You want to get your screwdriver and use it to depress the firing pin, which in turn pushes the piston to the back position or down. Use the screwdriver to push the piston forward again or up. And you want to repeat this several times to distribute the lubricant. This creates a ring of oil around the cylinder and is also getting oil to the steel O-rings around the piston itself. The next part we need to do is lubricate between the combustion chamber and the piston. Replace the work content element into the nose. Push the nose onto the table and that should reveal eight individual chambers. Grab the lubricant and place drops of oil between the combustion chamber and the piston itself. Approximately three to four drops per chamber will be sufficient. Once you have all the oil in there, you actually want to work the tool up and down to get the lubricant into the chambers and to the steel O-rings. Use the firing pin to push the piston back up and replace the nose cover. Place the body assembly aside. Next, you want to pick up the handle assembly and put a ring of oil around the two steel O-rings. Use your fingers to work in the oil by turning the O-rings two full revolutions. Next, visually inspect the O-rings that they're actually, the gaps in the O-rings are 180 degrees or opposite of each other. This allows for a seal and that needs to be done or the gun's not gonna fire correctly. Next, you wanna put a drop of oil into the shaft of the fan and give the fan a spin two or three times to work the oil in. You've completed lubricating the tool. We're ready to reassemble the tool. You wanna to pick up the body assembly. First, grab the uh, plastic black fuel shelf and slide that into the front of the tool. Pick up the handle assembly with the tool on an angle, reattach the handle assembly to the body assembly, sliding the fan on first, then clipping the front into place. Then you want to pick up the long uh, pin to be reinserted into the front of the tool, making sure that the fuel shelf has not moved out of position. Secure the screw to the other side. and tighten with the screwdriver. Be careful not to over tighten the screws. Firm is good. Next, you wanna uh, re-secure the black nut with the spacer washer still in place. Once that's done, we're ready to replace the rear cap. Ensure that the fuel cell door is open when doing this or it'll be stuck shut. Replace the four screws holding the rear cap. Whether you're using a power tool or a screwdriver, do not over tension the screws. Again, firm is good. Now put the battery, the gas, and the staples back in and you're ready to fire the tool. Thanks for watching.